And here to talk about it, we have Fabian. Uh, Fabian actually came up with the idea for this conference. It was the uh, Wikimedia UK annual conference last year, I think, instead of um, uh, I get to do a conference about opening educational resources. I say, yeah, okay, I'll do it, but we should look beyond the educational resources to what's beyond the two of practice. And here we are. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to ask how many people have actually heard of Wikiversity? <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. How many people have used it or been on it in some way? Okay, and how many people have regular contributions? <laughs> okay. Now, I, I find some of, the, some of the previous discussion quite interesting because it kind of touched on something about what Wikipedia is and what I would like it to remain, and that is an encyclopedia available for the general reading. And I can sympathise with various other people, all world, you, you know, can't you have other sorts of writing, other other ends, and this actually really exists. It's called Wikiversity, it's a place for educational material. So in that sense, that's already answered that question. You know, there is some space there. I feel it is grossly underused. There's 257 regular users on it at, at the moment. So two of them are here, so that's nearly 1% of the worldwide <laughs> English language Wikiversity contributors here. So, okay. So, really, I think that's that's kind of um, was, with that side of the question is that there is a way forward. There already is a uh, an unused group there, and that perhaps one of the things that can come out of this is how we can use Wikiversity better. There's no problems with doing um, original research on the university. Uh, um, it's geared up towards developing open education resources. So really that kind of fits the whole framework there. And one of the aspects of having such a, such a small contributor base is that the community is yet to be really formed and is yet to be really general. So there's an opportunity for people to come and get involved and really kind of take it forward. So um, take that as an open invitation to you all to kind of get involved and give it a go. This is a page that I developed on Wikiversity. You can see there it's got a talk page, which I'm going to click on now. And part of my feedback that I'm going to ask for you is, hey, I've got a talk page for this. There's a link from the EduWiki conference where all the details are to this. And I'd really appreciate it if you've got any comments or anything like that. Drop them in on the talk page. Particularly if it relates to anything that you yourself are involved in, drop a link. That would be great. Because then I will follow it up and maybe other people here who, who, who have a look at it. And um, another thing that, I, that I've done on this is I've put some um, metrics. And what this means is that I will be able to see how many people have visited. So at the moment it's zero, which is pretty much as we expect. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm not used to using. There we go. I'm used to using what's in it. Um, so, yes, please use the talk page. And one of the ways I'll be evaluating the success of this talk, I'll be looking at how many bits it gets. So, you know, that's kind of, I'm saying this because it actually is to do with the way that wikis can be used. And that is actually going to become clearer as I go through all of this. So, background. This is kind of um, not laying out 
quite as I would like, because I'm in Firefox, I kind of put it going OK, but Explorer, not quite so sure. But basically, I've been doing work with the um, University of Westminster, um, and I assisted Dr. Richard Barbrook on the political and simulation game. taking a group of politics students and they were designing a, a board game or a card game. That was their, what their course work was about. Um, some of you might be familiar with his book, Imagine Your Futures, which um, came out a few years ago. First of all, this is an academic book that's actually very readable to all the way to I kind of think it's good for academics get across to the broader pub public. One of the things that he, he deals with in this book is he looks at the Cold War, not in terms of an arms race, not in terms of a space race, but he analyzes it as a race to develop the internet. And he looks at this kind of information management as it proceeded in America, as it proceeded in Russia. And in Russia, they kind of put a hold on the whole of the side of the because they were scared of the social consequences. Uh, and when you look at some of the debates going on in China nowadays, you kind of see that this actually is an issue which goes back um, to the 60s and 70s. Um, so his involvement in all of this is actually linked to his involvement in media studies and looking at the social and political consequences of information and technology in society. And um, I've also been working with a colleague of his, Franz Peterson, who have been using it to um, develop an archive for simulation of the games we produce in a learning environment, for an enhanced learning environment. And we started to put up very much role playing games which we can use and build mainly politics, but also quite a few in economics, which we found already that put up by um, an academic university and university. And also I've been doing some work with the university, which is something which um, Radius Kulathungu has developed at the University of Islam, which is kind of taking the university into the community, which I, I kind of, um, I think that's really good to see as well. Um, so, and uh, some of that's been looking at study circles. Um, can I ask any people familiar with study circles? Okay. Right. Well, uh, okay, there's a couple of people. Actually, I, I think they're really important. I think that if I was in Sweden and asked that question, you'd probably get everybody's hands up. Because there are, um, when I say three million people involved in a study circle, it's actually, Grandchild is less than that, because some will be involved in more than one. In terms of the number of enrollments on study cycles, this, this kind of part of the mainstream culture. I think if I asked, um, okay, how many people have, have come across the uh, Workers' Education Association? Okay, that's that's more than half. That actually used study circles when it was being set up at that time, at the same time. Um, so maybe come across some of the idea of study circles. But not under that name. I, 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 I will come to that. Um, but uh, what I want to go on into first is Wikiversity and Wiki Educator. So, okay, Wiki Educator. How many people come across Wiki Educator? Yeah, quite a few. How many people have, have, have you know, opened an account and been active on it? Okay. Right. So, yes, because it, it does actually, it's really based in New Zealand at the Otago Polytechnic. And um, there might well be a reason for that, but uh, Otago has been quite cut off from the rest of the world. The development of online education resources is going to make a big difference. So it just means it's a way of bringing the knowledge of the world and making it more available. <coughs> Both Wikiversity and Wiki Educator were founded in 2006. Both are charitable organisations. 
both use media wiki. So there's, 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 there's quite a lot of similarity between the two. Wikiversity has got different sections in different languages, whereas wiki educate, when I say it's English language, the, the, the way you edit it is all in English, although there are, it does support other scripts and various stuff in other languages, but the, all the editing facilities are in English. So it's not to say it's restricted to English, but it just has one wiki educator and it's based on English. Um, the, Alexa ratings, and this is kind of how sites are, uh, their overall popularity or their sets. And they're both in the top 100,000. Wikiversity with them, um, just below 26,000 wiki educator, um, somewhere around 73,000 position. So they both have a quite a substantial impact. Um, I think probably Wikiversity has more due to its connection with Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Foundation. In many respects, I think Wiki Education is better organised, and I'm going to touch upon that presently. Um, and they're not rivals. There are quite a number of people who are active in that. It's not a case of having rivalry to a competition between the two. And in fact, you can put material across from one to the other because it's got the same media wiki format. So that's kind of a, um, those are the two main uh, uh, wiki models which are available. Um, what I'm going to go on to next is a little bit of background behind where wikis came from. Why, why do people create them? And um, because I think part of what we're dealing with here is the medium is the message. This is uh, Marshall McLuhan's ideas for actually how we do things, the technology that we use is, is part and parcel of the message that's going across. Right? And um, wikis were created in a specific learning. It was back in the 90s, uh, with Walt Cunningham, he did the first wiki in 1995. <coughs> and it came from a particular area of um, software development. And uh, it was software design patterns. Now, I would imagine there might be a few people here familiar with software design patterns. And then you might think, oh, what on earth is that? And I have to say, I don't really know much about them either. But the basic idea behind the design pattern is that if you're working on one software problem over here, you can use that experience <coughs> to help you solve another software problem over there. Even though it might be technically a little bit different, there's this transfer of knowledge. And that seems to me to be a, a, a basic educational insight which is kind of built into wikis. And another is um, extreme programming, which was a, um, an approach to software programming, which was to break it down into lots of small steps. And if you look at the illustration there with the planning and feedback loops, you've got kind of nested <coughs> patterns. So you'd have some which were going, um, you know, very, very quickly, and others which would be nested in longer cycles. So uh, that's like part of the environment which, which created. And um, I'm going to move forward in here. This is the Agile Manifesto. Ag Agile is a... Um, methodology for, for software development and um, in many ways linked to extreme programming. <coughs> and um, I produce a, a uh, manifesto and one of the ones was build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. And I thought well that actually applies 
to Wikipedia as a whole. So I thought I'd just pull that out. And um, I'm going to come back to study circles. Study circles is the idea that you don't have to have experts teach you. That actually groups of, of motivated individuals can, if they have the information available, they can turn, and we had the discussion around for that knowledge, they can turn that information into the knowledge. And what we've had with the great expanse of information available, that actually getting a lot of the, the information <coughs> isn't that hard now. Um, and you know, we had a came up before about trying to get down the, the paywall, which will make even more information available. The question is, the way of turning that into the knowledge, the way of being able to um, assess information, interpret information, and actually uh, make sense of it. And so the role of educators, I think, and, and, and I'm coming from an area where a lot of my study has been done in study circles, and they thinking in the workers' education system, is actually opening up people's learning capability. Because one of the other main things that's happening now is that the whole pace of technological change has just shot in the last 30, 40, 50 years. In fact, you can see people talking about how shooting ahead 30, 40 years ago and they've been spot on. So, whereas before, <coughs> people might go and gain a skill as an apprentice, and then that skill would remain, remain with them for you know, uh, their working life. That's not what people face now. People need, need to continually retrain, learn new skills, keep up with, them, up with the new developments. And that is going to continue after retirement. After people retire, retire so much of general so social interaction is now going onto the internet and now going mm -hmm. beyond things which haven't even been invented yet in you know, 20 years' time, that actually the way I <coughs> keep on board and keep abreast of all these events, particularly you know, sometimes when people come out of the workplace environment, they, they aren't in touch with the developments, which they're obliged to be. So in all of these things, I think that the role of the educator or the facilitator of learning is changing. And I think we're still going to need the experts. We're still going to need people with all, all the very specialised key knowledge and information. But it's actually the facilitation of learning and the, um, making sure that people keep with their learning skills um, up to date. That's what I think is the challenge that we really need to face. So, um, please, as I said before, put stuff on the talk pages. All these are links, so you know, if you want to find out a little bit more about study circles, <coughs> click on there. There's a wiki page about it. So, anyway, thank you. Thanks so much. Do we have questions? Taking off, you can see projects on there. People have started with the best of intentions, but they're not continuing. If you look back, and the last update was 2011, 2010. Even. That's all I want to do. Yes, I, I, I would agree completely. Perhaps I could say it a little bit, but I'm trying to do something that's a bit different, which is sort of in between. Because uh, I, I, it appealed to me because Wikiversity 
it's a, like a university, and what, what do universities do? What do they do with teaching and learning? But they also do with research. And what I'm trying to do is something kind of in between. It's not the sort of thing you normally um, think of. Most of the projects do seem to be on the kind of the teaching side or the learning side, not on the research side, or the pure research. And uh, well, I'm going to do something in between. If anybody wants to ask me what I'm doing, I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, I just had a comment about study circles and if you have any suggestions for how to facilitate it because um, my first thought is um, I'm still kind of stinging slightly from the Facebook isn't useful for education um, and actually I, I see this as a perfect um, example of how a Facebook group for instance can be set up you then got the technology everyone's using it uh, gives you a space to collaborate um, I don't know if this article goes into online study circles or virtual study circles, but I imagine um, there are other alternatives. Um, I mean, are you using study circles within Wikiversity and the MediaWiki platform itself? Um, this hasn't this really been developed, I think, within your website <laughs> management about Facebook, because I do think actually Facebook for study circles is brilliant for that sort of thing. It can bring people together. I think there's a wealth of experience, particularly in the school, where it is and it's a major part of further education and I think that are enough elements we are in this in this country to develop that. And I would like to see uh, Wikimedia in the UK kind of look at how to engage with those areas. The um, University of the Third Age, I think they do a lot of stuff which is basically around study circles. So I think it's a case of <coughs> linking together. I mean at the moment um, as the gentleman over there said, Wikiversity is underused, it hasn't got a focus, it hasn't got a direction. There is an opportunity there for people to come forward and say, right, actually, yes, that we're not doing cycle over here, over there, but let's do other things over here and work out how that community works. Because you, you know the, the point's already been made a lot that it's just been abandoned. Just on the Facebook issue, um, on the Facebook thing, oh, um, PSP University is pretty good for doing things like that because you can just kind of make your own course and make a challenge based, so you can just facilitate a course down a normal sort of thing. Um, I just wondered if you kind of had any or would you have any other outreach to be the very often for the language? Well, no, I can't just no, there's the two of us here, which probably constitute a large percentage of the Wikiversity, Wikiversitans in the country. So it's really a case of probably going through Wikimedia UK. If you know, we get some upside from a conference like this, to really take the whole Wikiversity project forward. I've just really been doing bits around the University of Westminster. I'm kind of throwing this into the debate, and I know we've got a panel session afterwards, which I hope it will help stimulate some discussion. So, any other questions on that? So, would you speak to Quietly? Thank you, Mr. Vivian. I remember um, at the Association for Learning Technology conference, I think it was 2008, like, Wikimedia University was the hot thing, and I actually developed um, some modules on digital libraries back in 2007. Just, maybe I missed it from your talk, but what, what do you think went wrong? Is it just because we developed so many parallel systems, like the educator, peer-to-peer -peer you? Is that what's happened, or I mean, what, what do you see? I, I tell yeah. you what, I mean, I'm happy for people to tell me I'm wrong. This is what I think happened. Yeah. There were various contentious individuals on Wikipedia who were putting articles which a lot of people got it as fringe science and original research. And there were some quite bitter arguments on Wikipedia. And they, they ended up getting banned from Wikipedia. And then they went to Wikiversity, where they continued their bad habits. And they'd already become quite abrasive to deal with as individuals. I think they just scared a whole lot of people. Those people are no longer there. 
it's kind of reduced down to a smaller number of people. So now I see there is an opportunity to try and build a new edu educational community. If you compare that with Wiki Educator, that has got a much stronger educational community and they're more structured in terms of um, how they, uh, like talking about badging, they've got a system whereby you can become accredited as a Wiki apprentice, a Wiki buddy, um, <coughs> Wiki artisan. They've even got things which are, you know, they haven't developed that level, <laughs> level yet because they're, they're working out a small state. So that, that's kind of my take on it. I, I never really, I think you're the first person I've come across who was involved at that time in the university. So. Hi, hi. Yeah, hi. Um, what I think is your, oh, you think I need this? What I think <laughs> is your, <laughs> with Wikiversity is I can't find stuff. Um, See, I, I want a I program. I want one of your programs that, that, that helps me teach a particular <coughs> topics. And every once in a while, I'll find something because there's a link that somebody's put on, on Wikipedia or one of the meta wikis or something that links to it. And there it is, there's the resource, and it's good stuff. But if I start from scratch, I don't know how to find stuff on the university. And that's what boggles my mind. I'm not, not sure if somebody hasn't missed some fundamental mechanism for categorizing or linking or <coughs> something that gives me a chance to be able to find stuff. Are we going to, is that something, is that a, 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 a solvable problem? Um, that's quite an interesting point. I mean, my practice has been to work on specific areas, chart them out, read them up, and bring in some other, other things. There's been all sorts of people going on doing little you know, half a, half a page, which I look at it and think, should this be deleted? It's not that helpful. That's why I'm saying if, that if we develop an active community of editors, which will work in a different way from the way we could deal with the, the relationships will be different. A lot of them, I would hope, would be, you know, professionals in the education. But the challenge is to create a sort of community which can deal with that sort of problem and the other sort of problem. Now, we've got that platform. Platform's already there. Let's go for credit community. Yeah, but on that note, that can we move on to the next session? <laughs> 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 There's a quick question. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Barry? <laughs> 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 I'll talk to you after this, Barry. We can move on to the next session. <laughs>